What up guys, today I'm going to be power scaling the Dragon Ball Super anime and I'm going to be going throughout each arc specifically talking about all the power scaling feats and statements that we see throughout the series. So I'm not going to give you the entire show as a whole, I'm just going to go through each individual uh, arc as I rewatch it. If you guys checked out my last video, I explained in that video that I've been rewatching Dragon Ball Super recently and I want to finish each arc and as I finish each arc I want to make two separate videos. One video I want to make specifically on the writing, uh, the art, the animation, uh, you know, just the whole production of the show as a whole, uh, mainly on the writing side. And I want to compare it to the when I originally watched the show and how I felt about it. And as I do the comparisons, I want to see if it uh, holds up or is it better than what I uh, initially thought when I first watched it. So those videos are specifically just about the writing and, you know, the story as a whole, whereas these videos are going to be specifically about the power scaling and talking about the feats and statements we see throughout each arc specifically. So these ones, I'm just going to be focusing on all the feats. So the next one is going to be Resurrection of F. When I'm done uploading these two videos, then I'm going to go to the next one. So each uh, arc, uh, when I finish, I'm going to be making a video on it, then I'm going to go back to it. So it's going to take some time uh, for me to complete this. But yeah, I'm going to go throughout the entire uh, show as a whole. And then I'm going to string along all the feats and then talk about Goku's uh, and the rest of the Dragon Ball characters power as a whole throughout the end of the series as a whole. So let's get on to it. Now, the first arc, uh, first feat we see in this arc is pretty much from Beerus. He shows, um, he ends up pretty much destroying a planet. Uh, but this one is a little uh, interesting compared to how he normally uh, we've normally seen planets being destroyed. Uh, in this one, what happens is Beerus is on this planet where he's getting served food and he he has a problem with the food, so he says, you know what, I'm gonna destroy the planet, but only half. So he taps the table, he ends up selectively destroying half of it, and as the planet blows up, he ends up outside of it, just watching and viewing it with Whis uh, himself. Now, this is impressive because of the fact that, you know, Beerus, we, we've seen these characters destroy plants before, obviously it's not that crazy, but it's specifically impressive on how, what, uh, how much little effort he was able to do it by just a single tap on a on the table he was able to do this. We've never seen anybody destroy a planet that way, it's pretty unique, but also due to the fact that he was able to select a specific part of the planet that he was able to destroy by doing so. Usually if they do that, they just fire off a big energy attack and they minimize the size of it so it destroys a portion of the planet. But this one he was able to selectively pick a part of the planet that he was gonna destroy, which is honestly a lot more impressive than you know uh, anything else. Now after this, we do see a, uh, this scene is not going to be that impressive, but it does make sense later on. Uh, at this point, Beerus is trying to, you know, find out about the Super Saiyan God. So he's trying to get his memories. And as he's doing this, he has Whis to go look for a uh, planet to get some dinosaur meat so he can, uh, you know, get his memory out there. And he's talking to him all back on his planet. He's saying, hey, Whis, are you done? How, how much time is left? He says, I have like two minutes left. So, you know, be patient. So he arrives to the planet to basically get some dinosaur meat for Beerus because he feels that if he eats this meat, that it will, you know, kind of like give a jolt in his memory so he can remember his prophecy about the Super Saiyan God so he can go and seek it out. And that itself is not impressive, but it does tie into a feat later on. But after this, we see uh, as uh, Whis shows up, he's talking to one of the inhabitants there. And as he's talking to the inhabitants, He's trying to be, you know, uh, pretty much a like, cordial. He's trying to explain to him why he needs it, but the creature's not trying to listen, so he's trying to find him. So Beerus is like, screw this. I'm showing up. He's like, but you said three minutes, and it's only two minutes and 20 seconds. So he's like, what? So what? It's been like 220 years for me. Now, this is impressive, like I said, because the last scene wasn't that impressive, but this one is impressive specifically due to the fact that, you know, that, uh, what's the thing called? That, um, uh, Beerus was able to show up there pretty fast. Now, people have used this for Beerus's speed. I used to go against this and saying, no, 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 Whis was carrying Beerus along there and he just got outside of the place that he was carrying him. But that wasn't clearly true because watching it, you see that Beerus is uh, as, uh, in his home planet. So he's in his home planet while Whis flew off to some distant planet, maybe a galaxy over or multiple galaxies over, but he moved to another planet and he was trying to get the meat and Beerus gave him like three minutes, but he only had two, uh, two minutes and 20 seconds 
uh, that passed and Beerus already showed up. So that means Beerus within around two minutes and 20 seconds was able to go throughout uh, an unquantifiable uh, amount of distance. So he was able to leave his planet and go all the way directly to, uh, you know, uh, directly to another uh a planet. This isn't pretty impressive, but it's hard to quantify because we don't we're not given an exact amount of distance that he was able to travel and exact amount of time. The most we can say is within a two to uh, two uh, minute and twenty second time frame, but we don't know the distance. But still, going from that far of outer space should still be a couple, maybe a couple of light years, uh, depending on if it's just from solar system to a solar system or galaxy to galaxy. It could differ, but it's still pretty uh, fast and impressive uh, feat to see. After this, one of the inhabitants gets mad and tries to attack Beers. As he attacks him, he fires off this energy blast. But Beerus basically like dodges it. It doesn't do anything to him. And then he, this guy is like, okay, you know what? He fires another one and Beerus is able to just stand there, hold his finger out, catch this blast, and then fire back at him, defeating him. This is impressive due to the fact that we do see this kind of ability later on with Beerus once again, where he's able to do something as impressive as, you know, catch somebody's attack and stop it and just throw it at them. Why is this impressive? Because this showcases that even if they fire an energy attack, all Beerus has to do is just basically hold out his finger or use his powers to basically stop the attack and then he can fire back at them, which is pretty impressive uh, if you ask me. Uh, but then after this, we see pretty much um, we do, uh, Beerus, as he's doing this, he pretty much destroys this planet pretty casually he gets tired of it and he drops this little speck of energy it goes into the planet ending up pretty much blowing it apart and destroying it and we do see some pretty cool uh scenes as like the energy is flowing through the bottom of it destroying it um as a whole and they're just shocked at what happened so why would i put this in L like i said before yeah these feats are not technically that impressive right they might not seem that impressive because a lot of people are saying, well, we've seen these guys do other things more impressive than that, uh, than destroy a planet and shit. But so why would it be crazy? But the reason why this one is impressive is due to how much energy he put in. And it's really uh, clearly different between somebody using all their power to destroy a planet and somebody using minimal effort to destroy a planet. Just showing how much stronger they've gotten at this point to be able to contest with somebody who can casually destroy a planet uh, like that. Um, I think the last impressive feat we've seen that would be able to destroy a planet with the least amount of energy was in um, the Boo Saga where Kid Boo was able to destroy, would have been uh, able to destroy the Earth with just a basic key blast of Vegeta didn't deflect it. So all the key blasts that you see getting fired between Goku, Super Saiyan 3 Goku and Kid Boo would be planet level since they're pretty much uh, almost equal in terms of power. So that's pretty impressive, but this is even more impressive since it's just a speck of uh, energy. So we saw quite a bit of interesting stuff. We saw Beerus destroy half a planet selectively with just a tap of his finger. We saw Beerus being able to travel an unquantifiable amount of distance, maybe a couple of light years, or you know millions to trillions of miles within like a, a minute or seconds. I would say maybe a light year because if you're going from their planet to another planet, outside of the solar system or maybe another galaxy is most likely uh, gonna be, you know, it's most likely gonna be pretty far, especially knowing how fast Weiss was and he said he was two minutes away from the planet and Beerus was able to get there pretty quick. So Beerus is able to go many, many times faster than the speed of light. I wouldn't say, I don't know how much to quantify that as, but for argument's sake, we could say that he was able to, within two minutes and 20 seconds, be able to travel one, uh, uh, between one ga uh, one solar system to another, which would be around like 2.7 uh, uh, light years, I'm pretty sure. But after this, we af after Beerus basically destroyed the planet, he goes on with him and Whis. They start to fly into the uni uh, out in the universe, and as he's flying, Beerus basically questions him saying, are you, can't you go any faster? He stops and says, I'm already the fastest flyer in the universe as it is. So why am I particularly talking about this? Obviously we know that Weiss would be the fastest since he is Beerus' master and he's above Beerus. The only reason I'm mentioning this feat is due to the fact that I've heard some uh, people argue in my comment section that 
when Weiss is traveling throughout the universe, the reason why he's traveling so fast is not because of his sheer speed. He's traveling that fast due to using a technique like uh, instant transmission. And they stated that he's using that technique, but clearly by that statement right there, that isn't true at all. Because if he was using a technique instead of his speed, then he wouldn't have mentioned the fact that he's the fastest flyer, talking about flying speed. So why would he mention that if he's using a technique specifically? So that is not true. People I've heard, like I said, say that uh, a couple of times that, oh, he's using a technique and he's not using his actual power. And I was just like, are you sure? And they said, yes. So clearly that uh, statement disagrees with it. But after this, we see as Beerus is uh, trying to find out where the Saiyans are, he finds Goku and he finds he's on King Kai's planet. So he basically asks him, he's like, he's like, oh, so how long would it take to North Kai's planet? Which we basically tells him, he says it will take uh, him 26 minutes and 44 seconds to get there, which is good because that gives us an exact time uh, that it'll take. So it takes him to go from Beerus's planet to King Kai's planet. Uh, it takes 26 minutes and 44 seconds. And this is really impressive because Beerus' planet is within the living universe and King, King Kai's planet is not even in the same dimension. It's literally in the other world and it's like the bottom layer of the other world, but still, it's in the other world. So not only was um, Weiss within 26 minutes and 44 seconds be able to travel throughout uh, the living universe, and then leave the living universe to the afterlife, which is another separate dimension, and get to the planet there within that time. So, yeah, some people might argue, well, it took him a certain amount of time to go this fast. But remember, he's going from one realm to another realm. He's not just going from one part of the universe to another part of the universe. He's going from one dimension to another dimension. So that's far more uh, impressive than that. But then after this, uh, the Elder Kai and uh, Shin are both talking and they say, after uh, waking up, Beerus Sama destroyed eight and a half planets in just a day. So all this, uh, all the planets that he was destroying that we see throughout the beginning of Dragon Ball Super was within just half a day. So he was able to destroy ha uh, you know, eight and a half planets uh, in just half a day's uh, time. But after this, uh, you know, the Elder Kai explains to Shen how dangerous Beerus is. He says, as a matter of fact, uh, it was Beerus who sealed me in the Z-Sword 2, which doesn't make much sense because from what he explained in the Boo Saga, he said somebody that was more evil, than, uh, I think he said more evil than Boo, or not as evil as Boo, but uh, less powerful or something like that. But that doesn't make sense because Beerus is not really evil and he's way more powerful than Boo. And some people try to use this as an argument saying that maybe Beerus at that time was weaker. I don't really agree with that. I just think that it's just Toriyama not really taking into consideration past statements that he made, which is not too much of a shock or surprise to see, you know, him doing something like that is to be expected. But then he goes on to say that if Beers goes all out, he uh, the entire universe might disappear. So we already get our first universal level uh, uh, threat or statement. So Beers is stated already prior to even him throwing hands with Goku that he could destroy the entire universe if he starts to like you know take shit serious. But then after this, we see Vegeta training. And they're trying to contact Vegeta to tell him what's happening, but he's training and he's training in 150 times his gravity. He said he, uh, 150 times gravity has outlived his purpose. Before this, he was kind of struggling and he had to train a little bit more because he was sweating to be able to dodge these lasers and, uh, you know, press these buttons on these machines that are firing the lasers in 150 times Earth's gravity. Personally, I don't consider this a feat. It looks more like an anti-feat. The reason why I say that is the fact that Go Vegeta should be in his base be able to handle 150 times Earth's gravity easy. Goku all the way back in the uh, you know Frieza saga was able to handle 100 times Earth's gravity in his base. And that was a far weaker Goku and Vegeta is far stronger than him. So in base being able to handle 150 times now doesn't make much sense. That's one of the problems with the writing of Dragon Ball Super. When it comes to power scaling, it makes statements like that that make no sense. It's like, wait, he was strong with 150, 150 times Earth's gravity in his base when Goku at base uh, all the way back in, you know, the Frieza saga was able to handle 100, which is almost like, is only like 50% uh, less, uh, you know, um, intense as what Vegeta was doing. So it really doesn't make any sense. But after this, uh, 
we have, you know, uh, Goku finds out about Beerus, and as he finds out, uh, King Kai just explained to him how powerful he is. He says he's capable of destroying uh, absolutely everything there is. He doesn't say the universe, but when he says everything there is, it's pretty much talking about the universe. And we know it is talking about the universe because, you know, the Elder Kairi mentioned the universe, so it makes sense. It doesn't just mean, like, you know, as in everything is the soul system or whatever. But as this is happening, Beerus arrives and now he's sizing up Goku. As he sizes him up, he says, you don't look like you'd possibly be able to beat him as you are now, which he's talking about Frieza. Uh, and then he says, um, he says, how long would it take for us to go from this planet to uh, Earth? Because at this point, he was just like, you know what? He checked uh, Goku, he sized him up. He said, you can't even, he's like, I don't even think that you could beat somebody like Frieza. So I don't think it's my, uh, worth my time to fight you. So he said, you know what? Fuck it. I'm going to just leave. So he was going to leave to Earth. Now he's going to leave from King Kai's planet all the way to Earth, which is once again in the living universe. And we states it's going to take three whole minutes, which is very impressive because once again, they're leaving another dimension. They're leaving the afterlife to uh, the living realm with just sheer speed alone and he was able to go to there in three minutes so we uh we apparently the distance between uh, beerus's planet compared to king kai's planet is 26 minutes and 44 seconds but from earth to there is only three minutes which is pretty uh you know it's pretty interesting to hear that but it's still impressive that he was able to do something uh, on that level but as this is happening goku's like come on beers fight me i know you're saying that i'm not strong but trust me i am and then king kai's warning him he's like hey he's so strong that he can send the likes of you flying in the furthest uh, ends of the universe with a single snort so he, he king kai's clearly seen super saiyan 3 goku so he's basically talking about super saiyan 3 goku saying hey of Beerus was to sneeze at you, he would be able to send you flying across the entire universe. That's insane. A Super Saiyan 3 Goku is so weak compared to Beerus that if he was to sneeze, he could send a, a person as powerful as him throughout the entire uh, end of the entire universe. He might It might have been a hyperbolic statement, but I don't know. I would kind of take it serious because... You know, King Kai, it does seem like he was being genuine with what he was saying. And from what we've seen from, you know, like Beerus's, you know, power compared to Super Saiyan 3, it does make sense. But after this, Beerus says, I can see how you managed to defeat Frieza once when he transformed into a Super Saiyan uh, to fight him. But, uh, but then he said, but if that's all you've got, defeating Frieza would probably be the best you, or you are capable of. Now, I don't agree with this. I think this statement is uh, honestly dumb. It, it's a dumb statement because it's like, okay, so you're basically saying that super that Goku, even at this point in base, would not be stronger than Frieza, and in Super Saiyan, yes, he would be because like obviously he would, but even what Super Saiyan, he would only be stronger than uh, Frieza, and not that much stronger, which. This is why I say it's important to use also the anti-feats because a lot of people want to say, well, Goku can do this and that and we've seen this feat and that feat in these arcs, but then they ignore also the anti-feats that kind of make them look weaker and make less sense because let's be honest, this is kind of BS that somebody like as powerful as Goku at this point is, you know, in his base, he's still not above, you know, Frieza and would need Super Saiyan and even in Super Saiyan, he's only not that much above him makes no sense because we saw super saiyan goku when he fought against cell who was far stronger stronger and astronomically stronger than frieza goku was able to contest what cell yes cell was holding back half of his power but still he jumped up so much significantly in power even half of cell's power is way more than frieza so i just feel like the writing in here is very bad because th th those statements were not needed. It doesn't enhance the writing. All it does is make these characters look weak. And yes, we do see some impressive feats in this arc, but that kind of ruins it by stating that base Goku is not, you know, stronger than Frieza. We, sh we know that at this point, base Goku should be able to one-shot him. We've seen it in one of the other movies that, you know, Gohan and base did it. And yes, that was a movie that was not canon, but let's be honest, that is is logical that that's what would happen if Goku fought him. So I call BS on that. Base Goku should be well above uh, Frieza and Super Saiyan Goku should not be only capable of defeating somebody like Frieza because we saw him being able to handle Perfect Cell, even though it was half of Perfect Cell's power, it's still way more impressive than, you know, anything that uh, Frieza could do or Frieza's capable of. So I call BS on that one. Uh, but then we see later on as Be Beerus and Goku are fighting, we see some pretty interesting stuff. As Goku's uh, attacking Beerus, 
uh, he fires an energy attack, he fires a Kamehameha, and as he fires it at him, Beerus basically tanks the, uh, the blast, but then we see that he didn't just like tank the explosion, he actually uh, pretty much tanked, uh, tanked it with blocking with just a single finger, which is pretty impressive uh, if you ask me. Not only was he able to take the energy attack, but he was able to block it with a single finger as a whole. That's pretty crazy, uh, showcasing that even Super Saiyan 3's power is nothing to compare to Beerus. But then Goku tries to attack him, but he moves back as he tries to attack him. And he's like, what's happening? Why did I retreat? And he said, you really are something. And Goku's wondering, he's like, actually, I think of attacking you just uh, now. And um, he goes on to say, if you hadn't moved away, you would have lost. So he says, no doubt about it. Uh, the, and he said, he even mentioned the fact that he can't sense the key of deities. So this is important for, uh, and he also calls him a fighting prodigy, but this is Im important for a few reasons. One, he was able to casually, while significantly holding back, block Super Saiyan 3 Goku's Kamehameha with a single finger. This is impressive because Super, uh, Super Saiyan 2 Goku should be beyond uh, soul system level. Super Perfect Cell could destroy the soul system, Go on with half, uh, less than half of his power was able to beat that attack, meaning that he's at least more than two times soul system level. And then Goku and Vegeta uh, and the Buu Saga got stronger than Gohan when he was at that time, so they would be past that in Super Saiyan 2 alone. And then Super Saiyan 3 would be four times that. And since there was a time jump here, Super Saiyan 3 Goku should be even stronger. So this would be uh, Kamehameha that would be a multi uh soul system level attack and Beerus was able to uh, basically block a multi soul system level destroying attack with a single finger but it's also impressive due to the fact that uh you know uh what's the thing called that Beerus was able to um not only block it with a single finger but after that we see when Goku tried to jump and attack Beerus his body instinctively realized that it was a danger and that he was going to attack and move back and he even mentioned the fact that even though he can't sense key he was his body was able to react to and sense it and go back this is important because we know later on Goku unlocks Ultra Instinct and Master Ultra Instinct where basically his body moves on its own without thinking but we already seen that Goku had somewhat of this ability all the way back in the first arc of Dragon Ball Super where he was fighting against Beerus he showed this uh, ability so it was showcasing that Goku always had this talent or skill within him and he was a prodigy and even against a deity that he can't sense his energy his body instinctively was you know knew that he was basically in the danger zone and he had to get the fuck out of dodge before you know he was he's going to be screwed so that is pretty interesting and impressive uh to see um you know them kind of foreshadowing ultra instinct and seeing goku even in his uh you know all the way back in Battle Gods being able to do something like that. But after this, Goku gets two tapped by Beerus, and as he gets beaten down, he says, the only way to get stronger would be to merge with Vegeta. And then he says, well, um, after that, he says pretty much that not, that won't, uh, I don't even think that would work. So that's impressive to see that, you know, he, he feels that even with fusing, that he can't beat him. He feels like one, fusing is the only way to beat him, but then also, you know, mentions the fact that maybe even fusing won't work against somebody like, uh, you know, uh, Beerus. And this is specifically impressive due to the fact that uh, we saw what, you know, Super Vegito, Super Saiyan Vegito was able to do to, uh, uh, you know, uh, Buhan. And Buhan is very powerful, right? So he was able to do that. And we know that theoretically that, uh, you know, Vegeta would be able to go Super Saiyan 3. So theoretically, even with a heavily suppressed Beerus' power, he would be, you know, um, a heavily suppressed Beerus would be, uh, what's the thing called? Be able to easily beat a Super Saiyan 3 Vegito. Now, how does the power scaling work? First, uh, you know, fusions is kind of interesting. It says their max power, so Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta and Super Saiyan 3 Goku times each other, then you multiply that by 100. Some people say that in sources, but there's no definitive, you know, uh, power scaling for the fusions. But we do know for an argument, in fact, that base uh, uh, Vegito is at least stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku by quite a bit. So he's stronger than Super Saiyan 3 Goku, meaning that even if you were to get a form that was, let's say, uh, you know, you say, let's say you get a form that is uh, base, so let's just do a, a more simpler one. Base Goku 
would be Super Saiyan 3 level, then you times that by Super Saiyan 1, 2, and 3 again, and even with that extra power, he would still be not, not be able to beat Beerus, who is heavily suppressed, which is pretty impressive if you ask me, like I said. Uh, but after this is happening, he comes to Earth, he's talking to them, he he's trying to hang out with the Earthlings, and he is pretty chill and fine with them at first, but at a certain point, he just loses it and he starts to fight them. And as he's fighting them, the the Piccolo, uh, Tien, and Android 18 try to jump Beerus. As they try to jump him, it does not go their way. They're trying to throw shots at him. He's dodging all their shots pretty easily. And as he does this, he opens his eyes, knocking them back. And he hits them so hard that they're like in slow motion getting attacked. And as they fall down pretty much... Uh, they are like they seem depleted and so much so that piccolo needs to be rehealed by dende which is crazy if you think about it because he beers didn't really do anything all he did was pretty much open up his eyes and it, him opening up his eyes alone was able to knock back these three and then de uh, deplete them of their energy now him dodging them is not that impressive because he was able to dodge super saiyan 3 goku pretty easily which he's well above them but the fact that he was able to take them all down with just opening his eyes just showcases how ridiculously op uh you know beers is in general right um but also the fact that they were so depleted they needed their energy back. Meaning that Beerus can take down somebody like Piccolo who would be, you know, people argue that he's perfect cell level at this point. Um, he would be able to take down somebody as strong as perfect cell with just opening his eyes up. That's how crazy the power jump is uh, compared to him. And then additional other characters that are uh, decently powerful also on top of that. Uh, but then we go on as Vegeta is like, screw it, I'm going to jump in, I'm going to fight him. So he goes after him uh, in his Super Saiyan form. But as he does, Beerus just uses his eyes again, once again. As he uses his eyes, he pretty much paralyzes uh, Vegeta. And as he paralyzes Vegeta, he can't move. He even says, my body, I can't summon uh, up any power. Uh, but uh, as this is happening afterwards, uh, what happens is pretty much um, they kind of go crazy as... Bulma is like getting pissed at Beerus for you know doing too much she's like okay you're doing too much so she slaps him because she's he's ruining her a birthday party Beerus gets mad he obviously slaps her back Vegeta turns up he loses his shit he goes into his powered state and he gets so powerful that even in Super Saiyan 2 he's able to surpass Goku and uh so much to the point that Beerus basically states that it's been a long time since I pushed myself anywhere near 10% of what I'm capable of now personally I don't like this statement because I do think this is an anti feed. I don't think that Beer should have been able to, uh, uh, an enraged Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, even if it surpassed Goku in terms of power, should not be comparable, uh, so powerful that he pushes Beerus to, uh, use, uh, you know, 100% of his power uh, or 10% of his power. Now, some people might say, well, it's only 10%, but remember, Super Saiyan God Goku couldn't even beat. Uh, Beerus. So if Super Saiyan God Goku couldn't even beat Beerus, right? Then that pretty much means that, uh, what's the thing called? That Goku at that point, even with his jumping power would be, compared to Vegeta would be like, he'd be like, uh, if he's using 10% of his power, that means that he was using one tenth of his power. That would mean that Goku would only be able to pull out eight tenths of his power, or nine tenths of his power, meaning that Goku's only eight to nine times stronger than an enraged Super Saiyan 2 Vegeta, which honestly does not make sense. It's kind of a dumb, uh, kind of a dumb thing of you're asking me. This is another clear cut uh, indication in my opinion that the power scaling just doesn't make any bit of sense uh, in my opinion. So yeah, I don't agree with uh, that statement. I think it's dumb, it's kind of like the Frieza one. It doesn't make any sense that he would say that uh, base Goku can beat Frieza and that Super Saiyan Goku is only barely capable of beating Frieza and that's the only thing he's capable of doing when we know that's not true and then him saying 10% we know this is even more bullshit because we see Go Beerus later on as uh, no matter how much stronger these characters have gotten Beerus is still above them so clearly he's way more he was had way more power than that and didn't need to use 10% now some people argue by saying that Beerus was lying in this just to hype up Vegeta and it does make sense because he was lying to Goku a lot of times saying oh I'm using 100% of my power and he did lie to him saying that you're the second strongest person I fought 
saying Monaco was when that wasn't true just to motivate them so he could have probably just been motivating him but knowing Dragon Ball Super's uh, power scaling and writing most likely it was just you know bad writing so I don't know uh, pretty much about that. Now after that they pretty much uh, you know lose Vegeta's taken out by Beerus they're about to be destroyed but as this is about to happen, Goku arrives, he shows up and he tells them, hey look, I'm gonna wish, uh, uh, I'm gonna use the Dragon Balls to make a wish to make the original Super Saiyan God to come here and then have him, uh, have him fight you. But there was no original Super Saiyan God, but they did find out about the ritual and how to unlock a Super Saiyan God in a new person, which Goku did. And as he did this, he was going into his transformation and as he was going in this transformation, we see some pretty impressive uh, stuff happening. First, there's a big bright light that beats out and it expands pretty big it, it covers the entire boat and then it shoots up into the sky we see some golden clouds and as we see golden clouds then there's a hole that departs into outer space so we see the night sky even though it was the morning uh, when this was happening so we see the night sky now and we see inside the hole of the thing it looks pretty cool but it's just showcasing how divine it is and as this is happening it starts to rain but it's also hailing on top of that. So they're seeing the hail and rain now as thunderstorms and it's just going wild then it turns to sun and it's like bright and then it turns midnight, night, uh, day, midnight, night. So now it's going through different cycles. It's even snowing now. So then it goes back to light and then it's shining and then it comes back to normal. Now, why is this impressive? This is impressive due to the fact that this makes the transformation and the power of a Super Saiyan God far more unique now, it makes it feel, uh, you know, special and magnificent. Not just only visual wise, uh, like looking wise, it doesn't just only look cool, but also the fact that uh, pretty much that it showcases that this transformation is so high level and divine that it can pretty much do crazy things like turn it into night and then change the weather do crazy weather phenomena, make it rain, make it hail, make it uh, have thunderstorms, have it snow, have it go from day to night cycles, and then it goes through like uh, seasonal periods because it's so highly divine and godly that it's above normal, uh, you know, uh, logic. And I think that's very important to talk about because a lot of people, when they think about Super Saiyan God, they think about it as just as crazy power up, but it's also kind of divine in, in nature. So the powers of it's not going to be as like how we see with science where it makes scientific sense is going to be more outside of that realms in a more magical sense so i'm guessing they get more like divine and magical power but after this is happening goku fights against beerus in his super saiyan god form as he's fighting him beerus throws this large attack at goku goku's pretty much you know holding it back and as he's holding it back he starts to struggle and he says, you know, this one's, uh, you know, it's a bit too heavy for you just to pretend it does. But it is actually physical because Beerus himself stated that this one's too heavy. So he mentions that it has weight on it. So whenever these guys are pushing back these attacks or holding them back, it's not just them holding back energy. They're holding back actually something with mass and something that's pushing against them. So this these could be considered strength feats, uh, feats of strength where they're able to, you know, um, push back uh, heavy amounts of weight. So I don't know how how much we can, you know, categorize that with strength in general, but it is quite impressive to see. And this does give us something interesting because it explains now to us that uh, these attacks aren't just, you know, big balls of energy or big blasts of energy that have no mass. They're just energy and pure. And you, you can just contact it, but it won't have any mass. It does because it can push back these people and it can condense them and compress them. So when they're lifting energy attacks or put, holding them back, they're actually uh, showcasing a strength feat, being able to hold back something like that. Uh, we don't know how heavy it was because there's no actual weight to it that we can quantify, but we do know it's heavy enough for him to hold it and he still compressed it, which is also pretty impressive, and he survived the blast. After this, we see an impressive uh, ability from Beerus as he's fighting against Goku, he starts to go off a little bit more, and as he goes off, he touches Goku's back and then there's this light that glows uh, ability. Because usually people say, oh, Dragon Ball characters, they just use physical attacks and energy blasts, but there are also unique ways they use their energy attacks, like touching somebody and generating energy on them and then making them explode with it. That's also pretty, uh, you know, impressive uh, and crazy to see uh, the Dragon Ball characters be able to do. Uh, it does do damage. But then after this, Beerus goes up, uh, ramping up the, you know, attack a little bit more as he fires these energy blasts. 
which are stated to be able to destroy the planet. The individual one uh, of them is already, you know, uh, planet level. And after this, Beerus, you know, he is a little bit impressed, but he's also kind of disappointed. And he tells Goku, uh, he thought he was like, he was going to give him a good fight. But then he says, he's like, I guess it was my mistake. Uh, as he's disappointed, he stabs Goku right in the abdomen. Uh, Super Saiyan Blue, even though Super Saiyan Blue has had holes through it, we don't see Super Saiyan Blue having the ability to regenerate, which is a little weird that a weaker form like Super Saiyan God can do it, but a stronger form and a more controlled, perfect form like Super Saiyan Blue can't. It doesn't really make much sense in my opinion, but that's just the way it was. Uh, but also, we don't see that again, so you can kind of use this as an argument saying, hey, Super Saiyan God Goku can regenerate from damages like getting stabbed, or say that, well, we've never seen him do it again, and we don't see him using it in Super Saiyan Blue, so he can't use it in a higher form, or we it was just like a one-time deal, so who knows. But it's still pretty impressive. But after this, this is where we get the more impressive feat, where we have both Beerus and Goku uh, coming at each other to collide and as they're colliding they throw in their punch and they hit so hard that we see this weird uh, little shock wave and this is where we get the most impressive feat with the universe destroying stuff so as the shock wave is traveling it sends both of them flying back it doesn't really damage the earth too much we do see some effects especially on the people but it goes all the way out to the supreme kai's planet and they're seeing it it takes out uh um a solar flare from a star it basically or it may be their own, their own sun itself but it takes it out uh and as this happened he's saying what's happening it seems like the further away it gets from the point of impact um the more destructive it gets so he's saying uh, and then he's saying this is very bad and she's wondering what's happening but the old man is like really tweaking he's like oh shit this is not good and he says the entire universe will end up uh breaking and that's obviously shocking to say that those two collide uh, into each other a couple more times. So then they go in for uh, what seems to be another attack. I think that was just the initial attack. They just redid it again to make it look like that. Uh, but we see it says the uh, the people, the plants, we gods, beer, Sama, Goku, uh, all of them will be completely destroyed. Uh, and the universe itself will be turned into an empty void. Um, and we just see the shockwave as multiple plants and uh, plant toys have been destroyed by the shockwave as a whole. Uh, so this is impressive. Now let's go and explain a little bit more about why this is in particularly uh, so interesting and so uh, impressive to see. Uh, I think it's very impressive due to the fact that not only was it going to destroy the universe, but we see the effects of the initial attack because in this arc, it's not it's not a one punch universe destroying attack, but it's multiple punches, and it's explained by the Elder Kai that the further this you know shockwave goes, the stronger it becomes. Which technically doesn't make sense because in real life, a shockwave, like whether it's an explosion or whatever or a kinetic force, it should usually the energy that gets transfers out with the shockwave dissipates and gets weaker. At the center, it's stronger. But in this one, it's the opposite. And the reason why I say that this might happen, and some people like try to argue against this, is it's most likely due to the fact that Beerus is a godly being, so he's divine, and Goku with Super Saiyan God ability, and seeing as how when it transformed, it was able to do some pretty crazy uh, un, uh, like things that don't make sense, but are also pretty divine. I think that when you reach like a godly power or use godly power, it does have a certain level of, uh, you know, divinity to it. So it goes outside the realms of normalcy because normally, uh, you know, um, a shockwave should get stronger. It should only uh, should get weaker the further it goes out and not get stronger. So it doesn't make sense. The only way it could make sense is if it was some magical element to it. And since they do use are using godly energy and godly forms, it wouldn't make sense. If I'm being honest, that the energy uh, that their feats or what they're able to do is also outside the realms of uh, normal shit. Now, some people also try to use this argument to say, well, it's the shockwaves only doing it, it's not the power, but the shockwaves got generated from the power, and them saying that, well, it got stronger the further away uh, went out, so that's what it's doing it. But like I said, it's just an inverse of an actual explosion. So just think of it, the shockwave going out further is just their actual power being transferred more. Uh, and then some people say, well, 
you, you know, Elder Kai said that it will destroy all the uh, everything in even Goku and Beerus, but he doesn't know that. He doesn't know how powerful Beerus is to his full extent, or how powerful uh, Goku is to his furthest extent, because Goku throughout the fight actually got stronger. So. I wouldn't go with that too much. And then some people say, well, it's never said that it destroys the entire universe. It just makes it into a void. But that's pretty much destroying the entire universe. Like, it's destroying everything within that universe. And we saw this with, uh, you know, um, the Omni King when he wiped out, you know, the entire timeline that Zamasu, uh, you know, basically uh, fused himself with. There was still, like, space there, but it was empty. So, technically, but he still wiped out the entire timeline because we saw the time ring get destroyed. So, yes, you can still have a space there without, uh, uh, and have the entire realm be destroyed. So, even if it's just a void, that means he wiped out the entire universe. And when they mean void, they just mean, like, an empty black space. It doesn't mean that entire space is going to be gone. It's just the universe within that space is going to be gone. Uh, but after this, we see the second clash between Beerus and Goku as they both collide once again. We see the effects of it, the shockwaves. It's messing the ship that they're uh, all being transported on, the rest of the Z fighters. But we also see more impressive, um, you know, uh, capability of what's capable of. It, it vaporizes uh, a nearby asteroids. It also reaches the, uh, the planet again, and now it's actually affecting them even more. And they're more scared. This time it's affecting even the Earth, even though they're super close to it and the you know, damage should be uh, weaker the closer it is somehow. But yeah, this basically showcases the, the devastation of their um, coll collisions. Because after the first collision, we saw a solar flare being put out, which is pretty impressive because a solar flare of our planet was near the sun when a solar flare goes off. It could obliterate our planet. So solar flares can wipe out multiple planets, and it was able to take that off. It was able to destroy multiple planetoids, vaporize uh, asteroids, um, pretty much threatened to destroy everything. It was destabilizing, uh, you know, reality as a whole. So that's pretty impressive. But after this, we get to the third collision of uh, pretty much their attack as they do it, uh, and they're about to hit. Shin says the uh, the universe will be annihilated. And as this is happening, he says, uh, it, it, but once when they hit, it doesn't happen. And he's wondering what's happening. So he asks Elder Kai, what's happening? He says, by making it so that their fists hit each other with the exact same force and angle, um, he mentions that pretty much that they uh, technically cancel themselves out. So this is impressive uh, and important to uh, mention because... Uh, a lot of people try to say stuff like, well, you know, Beerus was doing all that power. He was putting in all the work. Goku didn't do anything technically, which is ridiculous to say because it's like, are you kidding me that Goku wasn't putting in any work? Like, like that statement already should negate that. Even if you want to argue, well, the first two, Beerus was doing it. Yeah, but by the third one, even Elder Kai specifically mentioned the fact that he was able to match not only in angle, but also in terms of power. That's why he was able to cancel it out. If he wasn't, then the shockwaves would still be getting generated and he couldn't be able to do anything against it. So clearly that is like, you know, a BS argument to make. You could kind of make that argument before, but afterwards, no. So... Yes, they're technically right, but they're also wrong because he was able to uh, cancel it out later anyway. So I guess for that part, you can say that. But after that, you can't really make that argument, which kind of ruins the point of the argument that, you know, Goku can't do that. And then Goku even goes on to say, uh, uh, to tell you the truth, I've been hoping to perfect that trick around the second clash. So Goku, he was just the reason why he wasn't able to do it uh, earlier or the second clash was due to the fact that he just... It took a little more skill and understanding because he's just newly got this power and it's still growing uh, as he's using it. Uh, so it's not like he's going to automatically be able to use such uh, destructive levels of power right away. It's not going to be, you know, that simple or easy. But a lot of guy people, I feel like, um, I feel like are going to be a little bit more harsher to judge when it comes to that. So then as we go on to next, there's this, uh, after that clash was stopped and basically prevented from happening, Goku finally canceled it out. They're throwing a couple more shots and he pretty much perfected it at this point. They canceled out the rest of the shots. So the first two shockwaves was basically going to destroy the universe. It was disrupting the universe and all the other realms. But by the third one, Goku was able to match and cancel it out. 
until Beerus fired one of his energy attacks and Goku had to fire back his Kamehameha. When they collided their energy attacks, they were basically both pushing back and it was generating the same waves again. So this was the third one. And as this was happening, he, he was like, oh shit. He's like, it can't be. And we see the effects now. It's, it's getting even stronger as it moves out and the people are being more concerned about it. And it's basically going, we see it in, you know, even King Kai's planet as they're running away. It vaporizes a planet. Um, as it moves on forward, it starts to, you know, affect more. And then the Elder, uh, he says, so it ends. It did, uh, did it come to this? Um, and pretty much that was, uh, that was pretty much it. So they're like, you know, they're saying it's time to say goodbye. Uh, so this was the third one. So the first two already did their job. They did quite a bit of damage. Uh, obviously, but they didn't destroy. Um, they didn't destroy the. Uh, they didn't destroy the universe yet. Now, some people use this as an argument, saying, "See, this was uh, this was not only a lie, but this was also incorrect. Uh, you know, this was also incorrect that uh, their uh, power was what's then called uh, could destroy the universe within three hits because the first two hits." Uh, or uh, they already did the first two hits and then they did the third one and it didn't get destroyed. But there's a little bit more context to this and I'll get into it. So uh, as we go on, uh, as we see, it says later on, the narrative says the superpower clash between the, uh, these two. So after it says it's gonna clash and they're gonna do that, they go on to say it was about to uh, destroy the universe. And as this happens, he explains to uh, him, uh, he explains uh, to Shin that their third clash isn't over. Now is the moment of truth. Now, this is important because a lot of people might say something like, well, they did clash third time. How come it didn't get destroyed? So clearly this means that uh, the Elder Kai doesn't know what he's talking about and all this and that stuff. But the reason why it didn't happen was, as he explained, that the third clash wasn't over. That was just a bit of it. That was the beginning of it. The end of it was basically the, both the energies condensed together uh, as a Kamehameha and Beerus' attack combined. It created this like super dense energy. And once that energy releases and blows up, uh, then it would pretty much, uh, you know, destroy everything. So people were saying that argument of, well, they did collide the third time with the energy attacks. So it should have been destroyed, but it's like, no, it was still continuing uh, at that point. The first two, the punches, yes, those were the first uh, col uh, collisions. The third one, it was energy attacks and it seemed like that was the third one, but it was just a bit of it. It only was fully the third one once when it blew up. At that point, it was still the, the third clash uh, as it was explained by him. And then later on, Whis explains to the, the rest of the crew, he says, several nearby stars and planets, including Earth, will be destroyed at the very least. So this is not saying that, you know, this is, all, uh, that their clash is only this powerful. It's, he's just saying that at the very least, at most, it's gonna destroy the universe, but at the very least, if you wanna lowball it, it will destroy several nearby pla uh, stars and planets, including the Earth. So this, uh, at the very lowest, at uh, the low ball would be multi -so uh, star level to multi plan level, which would make like multi -sol solar system level, which is impressive. Uh, but then he goes on to say that that power is capable of destroying the universe because, be oh, uh, what's his name? Um, Mr. Satan was telling him, hey, can't you stop this? Can't you save us all? And he's like, are you crazy? That power is capable of destroying the universe. So even though he said that at the very least it could destroy this, he does acknowledge the fact that, yes, it will still destroy the whole universe. It's just that if I'm being, you know, conservative with the estimates, it would be at least multi-star level, to, uh, multi-star and planet level, uh, which is still pretty crazy uh, to think about. But... Um, uh, it doesn't. Uh, it doesn't happen. And also that thing, I'll say that's bullshit. He's obviously lying because we know Weiss is way stronger than Beerus, and we see Be Beerus later on as he explains that uh, when the en the energy goes away and Goku says, "What happened?" He says, "All that en energy that was here, I nullified it and turned it into nothing." So he states that uh, he was able to erase one uh, all of a universe destroying uh, energy or attack. So if Beerus is fighting against a character who is a universe destroyer and they fire a universe destroying ability or attack, he could technically basically nullify their attack to nothing. So that's insane. That's how much power he has that he can nullify energy attacks that have enough power to destroy an entire universe. It's just crazy we see uh, what we see these uh, characters be able uh, or capable of doing.
But after this, he says, but if only I use 100% of my power, which I don't agree with. I think he doesn't need to use 100% because we know that throughout this entire arc, Beerus was kind of lying to Goku throughout this entire fight. So him saying that might be just to motivate Goku because later on he says, I'm gonna, now I'm going to use that power, 100% of my power to fight you, which we knew that was a lie. They even joked about it in the ending uh, where uh, we said, you really use 100% of your power? He's like, oh, yeah, whatever. And we know that's not true because... Yeah, as strong as Goku, uh, as much as Goku and Vegeta have gotten, they still haven't surpassed Beerus. So clearly, he was not using 100% of his power. So that whole statement about he needs to use 100% of his power to nullify Universe destroying attack is also not true. So I would say that Go Beerus can actually nullify a, a Universe destroying attack without having to go uh, fully 100%, even though he said it right there, because there's a lot of BS in uh, this arc for some reason. Uh, so yeah, I disagree with that. But then we see nothing, uh, another thing that's pretty impressive. Um, as both Goku and Beerus go to punch each other, Beerus punches Goku in the face and he says, your punching power is completely different than it was five minutes ago. So what happened is Goku and Beerus basically acknowledge that um, that they've both gotten stronger. Beerus is obviously, he's always had this power. He's just unleashing more of the power now and he's not holding back as much. Whereas Goku, on the other hand, he was pretty much, uh, you know, when he just first got the Super Saiyan God form, he, uh, it was it, it started off at a weaker base, but as he uh, fought and the fight progressed, he got stronger and stronger uh, throughout the fight, and it was increasing. So Beerus's power went up because he was uh, unleashing more power and holding back less, and Goku's power was going up doing, due to the fact that he was coming more into the Super Saiyan God. Now, this is important because a lot of people keep, keep on saying that, well, they were only able to destroy the Dragon Ball, you know, macrocosm within uh, within three punches. They weren't able to one-shot it and this and that. And the argument obviously is like, Goku gets stronger throughout the series. I mean, hell, even at this point, he was getting stronger. So the version of Goku five minutes ago that would have been able to destroy the macrocosm within three punches is weaker than Goku is now. We don't know to how much of an extent, but we do know that within just five minutes time lapse, Goku's gotten a lot stronger than even before then. So he would have been even past that level of power at that point. So saying that, oh, it's only three times is like, well, three times is universal is like well technically you know if you look at it Goku got stronger throughout the fight and if he got stronger he would be been upscaling and obviously throughout the series uh he would get even stronger so that wouldn't that wouldn't matter even less uh but after this as they're fighting both Beerus and Goku are throwing hands as they're throwing hands the and Elder Kai are talking they say they're uh they're still clashing with uh powerful attacks uh but there's still no universe destroying shockwaves anymore uh, and he said, what's the reason for do, uh, don't you get it? And he's like, what? He's like, probably because the fight is just like a brawl. So now they're just going back and forth and there's really no uh, threat. So this is a little weird of a statement, uh, the explanation that was given by, you know, Elder Kai. But I can pretty much explain it, uh, you know, or summarize what he kind of meant by that. Even though technically that is kind of a weird statement to make, it's like, is is just a brawl, but that's important that scene because of the fact that um, Supreme Kai once again acknowledged the fact that these guys are punching with such high levels of power that their attacks, even though they're not sending out these shockwaves that are destroying the universe, he still acknowledges that the power has they have enough power to destroy uh, the universe. They're throwing universe destroying power and attacks, and he himself is wondering, wait. They're still throwing attacks on that level of power, but it's not sending out the shockwaves anymore. Why? And he explained it's just a brawl, which is a dumb way to explain it. But the way what he's trying to say, Elder Kai, is pretty much that at this point, after Goku was able to match Beerus's, you know, uh, angle and power and cancel out the attacks, they both were able to control their power. Beerus already had control. It's just that he was working with Goku. So it was to help train Goku. Goku was still trying to get development of his powers and get a better handle uh, of his Super Saiyan God powers since it was new to him. And as 
the fight was progressing and as he was getting stronger, he was also getting more and more control over the form and getting better control over it. So now, just like with key control, he was able to control the uh, destructive energy that he was generating from the punches, not only by just trying to match Beers' angle and po uh, power, but just in general by being able to control the power that's leaking out from uh, his attacks. And Beers, here he had that, he was just going along with what Goku was doing since Goku couldn't control it. He was doing it in a more reckless manner, but now that Goku has more control, he's fighting more controlledly. And also this is to show that we don't have to worry and concern about universe destroying attacks anymore. They still have that power, but we don't have to worry about that and having to stop every five seconds to be like, hey, look, if they throw another shot, the universe is going to get destroyed. Or if they do this, the universe is going to destroy. It's like we can acknowledge that they have that power without having to focus on it so much and, you know, waste the story on that. And we can just have them go to like a regular fight now where they can just brawl without having to do all that. Though, like I said, they explain it in a very, very terrible way. I will get, I'll explain a little bit more about these feats uh, towards the end of this video. So stay tuned for like the end of it. Don't just like leave because... I explain far better when uh, I go through all the feats and statements towards the tail end because then I can get uh, uh, summarize all the stuff that we went through. But this is really important because a lot of people said stupid shit like, well, later on, we don't see them destroying the universe or threatening it in Resurrection of F. They don't do this. And the other ones, they don't do this. And I'm like, you dumbass. Like, obviously, why would they do that? If they do that, then it's like, well, one, they're going to keep on repeating the same shit. Two, they're going to have, these fights are going to be watered down so much because they're going to have to focus on, hey, these characters are going to destroy the universe. These characters are going to destroy the universe. It's like, at what point are these characters going to be able to fight with that amount of power and be able to control it without destroying everything? So they have to do it. It's, it's just a logical thinking. And they already explained it. So if you guys keep on ignoring it, then you're just being a dipshit. At that point, it's on you that you don't understand. They already said it. They don't have to keep on explaining it. I don't know if you guys are like little babies and you need somebody to carry your hand 24-7 to explain shit and always have to go back and explain the same thing over and over again. But once when you explain it, you don't have to do it. And it's the whole point is to make the fights have showcase how powerful these guys are without having to focus on the power every time because like... It's going to be too much. This way they can have a full-on fight while also acknowledging that they have universe strong power. And he even acknowledged it himself. So, yes, it is a consistency. Uh, but after this, Goku loses his Super Saiyan God. But he says, but I don't feel my power uh, has gotten any, uh, weaker uh, at all. And then uh, Beer explains to him, he says, the power fused with you and became your own. Basically meaning that it became natural to him to handle uh, what the Super Saiyan God power. It's no longer like something he needs to transform to get that power boost. He has naturally within him. He can still transform and get a power boost, but the initial power boost is now within him. And he goes on to say, those powers in God's red blaze still burns inside you like a scarlet flame. So even though he's in Super Saiyan form, Beerus acknowledges that he was able to infuse his uh, Super Saiyan God power and uh, ability within his Super Saiyan form and still has the energy within him. So even though he's not using the form, he still has within him, which is another argument people say that, no, 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 no. Goku didn't, uh, you know, absorb the Super Saiyan God into his Super Saiyan or his base form. He still has to transform to use that much amount of power. But that isn't true. And it goes on to ex uh, explain even further as the narrator says, continues to fight with a power which can destroy the universe. And this was Super Saiyan Goku versus Beerus. So if it was Goku didn't absorb this into his Super Saiyan form at this point and would still need to go with Super Saiyan God to have universe destroying power, then why would the narrator explain or state once again that the fight, uh, the fight continues with a power which can destroy the universe? So even they, the writers, uh, the, the narrator and the characters and everybody's acknowledging 100% that yeah, you know, they're fighting a, a lot of throwing a lot of shots, but they're still universe destroying shots. And even though Goku's in Super Saiyan form, he's absorbed the Super Saiyan God form of power. And even the narrator stating that the Super Saiyan God form had the power to destroy the universe. And now he's fighting him in Super Saiyan, but he still has the power to destroy the universe. Just like, uh, you know, in his uh, Super Saiyan God form. But uh, after this, we see some pretty interesting stuff as uh, Goku is fighting against Beerus. And as he's fighting against him, Beerus is basically, uh, he he's like... Goku fires another energy attack. He fires a Kamehameha, which should be universe level. And Beerus just stands there. He puts his hand out, stops it, and it, it starts to disappear. And it goes away. 
And Goku's wondering what happened. He's like, remember, I can void an energy uh, uh, blast. So he's basically sta- telling him that, did you forget I was able to completely nullify that universe destroying attack earlier and I can do it again. I did, uh, uh, and I can do it with any attack. So it depends, obviously, like, he would have a certain limit of how much power he could, you know, nullify, but he's still the level of power he can nullify is on a universal scale. And like I said, that Kamehameha blast from Goku should be universal because the narrator, it was already stated by we by Beerus that um, Super Saiyan Goku has the power of Super Saiyan God and the uh, ability of Super Saiyan God in the Super Saiyan form and even the narrator stated that they have the power to destroy the universe still so he still carries that destructive level of power and that was with the, his uh, you know his physical attacks his punches his energy attacks we all know in Dragon Ball energy attacks especially more condensed ones like Kamehameha's or Final Flashes increase the attack of potency even higher than the amount of energy that the user has so that would mean that that Kamehameha has more than universe destroying uh, uh, power because if their punches have universe destroying power then their energy blasts especially their more you know special energy attacks like a Kamehameha or a Final Flash would be beyond that so be beyond universal level of power and Beerus was still able to stop it and nullify that power completely but uh, after this, as they're fighting, Goku starts to push Beerus back into space in a Super Saiyan form. And Beerus, once again, acknowledges and states that this is the power, uh, he says, this is the power of uh, a Super Saiyan God, even though he's Super Saiyan. So yes, once again, Super Saiyan Goku has the power of Super Saiyan God, and it is verbatim right there, acknowledged that he does. So no argument there. Also, it's really impressive. I don't see a lot of people mentioning this, but while they were fighting and Goku's going off in a Super Saiyan form, you see a light glowing all the way into the Supreme Kai's realm, and that's Goku's Super Saiyan energy. So Goku can produ- produce so much energy that his Super Saiyan, uh, the light from his Super Saiyan form is so bright that it literally shines into the Supreme Kai's world realm which is another dimension that's outside of the all those other dimensions that are housed in what the living universe and it orbits around it and it was able to extend all the way out to there which like i said is just it's just pretty crazy uh to think of but after this is happening goku and beers fire another attack against each other both their attacks combined but this time it's a different energy attack and some of you guys might know this as the sphere of uh, destruction, especially if you played the Xenoverse games. Um, and as he's firing the uh, sphere of destruction at Goku, Goku's trying to hold it back in Super Saiyan, but he loses his Super Saiyan form and goes back to base. Uh, and as he goes to base form, he's trying to push it back, and he's like, just quit. Uh, Goku's basically now at this point getting swallowed up by the attack, but he th- clocks in a punch, and he throws it at it, basically destabilizing it, and then ends up destroying the energy attack. You see it started to glow a bit bright, and then it blows up, and then just a bunch of energy everywhere. So Goku shows his, uh, you know, uh, his power in his base. Now, this is important because before, when we saw them, their energies collided, it created a universe-destroying attack. And it stated they still have the power, to dis- uh, power capable of destroying u- uh, a universe. So that energy right there should be beyond universe destroying power. It should have beyond universe destroying power. But Goku is able to destroy it with, in his base form with a single punch. What does this mean? This means that not only now has he absorbed Super Saiyan God into his Super Saiyan form, but he absorbed it into his Super Saiyan, his base form. Because if he didn't, he wouldn't have been able to destroy it in his base, especially with one punch. So now his base form has the power of Super Saiyan God, not just his Super Saiyan, which is upscales him even more. And even further past that, this is an even stronger Vegeta, uh, I mean Goku, and a Beerus that's using even more power, colliding their energy attack again for an even more powerful attack. And Beerus, as he was pushing it at Goku, he wasn't just pushing it, he was increasing the strength of it. He was flicking his fingers, and it was increasing the size of the blast, making it even more powerful. So that means that base Goku has the power of Super Saiyan God, and even beyond that to the point where in base, he can one-shot an energy attack that would have the power enough power to destroy the entire universe or beyond that. So, Goku's base uh, uh, base uh, one punch can one-shot uh, a universe destroying attack. That's crazy. Just think about that. He can one-shot a universe destroying attack in his base. 
But after this, this kind of bleeds a little bit more into the resurrection of F story before that, where Vegeta went to go train with Beerus, uh, or, or Whis, he went to go train with Whis. Uh, but this is, I think, pretty interesting to mention and some, something that I didn't catch when I first watched this, but I caught it now. And some of you guys might like this because it's actually pretty interesting. We go on, as we see later on, uh, Shin is talking to uh, Elder Kai. He says, even so, I can't help but wonder what happened to those first two plants that vanished. Um, and then he says, however, there isn't a single trace uh, left of those plants. Why did I put this in, even though it's kind of technically more in the Resurrection of F story? I left it in because I thought it was pretty interesting because before we saw Goku, when he was about to attack Beerus, he moved back so he wouldn't, uh, you know, get hit. And that was showcasing that an early form of, uh, you know, uh, Ultra Instinct. But what we didn't acknowledge or I haven't heard anybody else mention is the fact that that scene basically showcases that it was foreshadowing that Beerus had a technique that can raise something out of existence, the Hakai technique. Because when the other plants were destroyed, he just said that those plants were destroyed. But this one, he said these two in particular, there's something special about them. They didn't just get destroyed, they're gone without a trace. So most likely when Beers destroyed them, he erased them from existence, so he used the Hakai technique. So already in this arc, they hinted at Ultra Instinct, and they also hinted at uh, Beers having the ability to erase things out of existence or have the Hakai technique. Uh, as he did to two plants. Also, he has it on a planetary level uh, and scale uh, to do his Akai technique. Now, let's go and summarize the entire feats that we saw throughout this. The first few feats we saw were some interesting stuff. He destroyed half a planet by just tapping his finger on a, uh, on a table and being able to selectively destroy that. We also saw him be able to travel an uh, unquantifiable amount of distance, most likely from one solar system to another, which the average distance would be around 2.7 light years, which one light year is like 15 trillion uh, miles. So he was able to tr uh, travel 2.7 uh, light years within around a, a time span of two minutes and 20 seconds, which is pretty impressive. We also saw him be able to catch the guys of energy blast and fire back at him with just, you know, holding his finger up. Uh, he also casually destroyed a planet with a very, very tiny, a tiny speck of energy, showcasing how high the levels of power that they have. Um, but then after that, there was just like, you know, Go uh, Goku and Super Saiyan 3 basically getting washed, getting his Kamehameha blocked with a single finger, taking getting taken out with two hits. Goku acknowledging that even if him and Vegeta were to fuse into Super Vegito and Super Saiyan 3, they wouldn't be able to beat Beerus, and this was a heavily suppressed Beerus. So Super Saiyan God Goku, and at this point, base Goku would be well above Super Saiyan 3 uh, Vegito at that point. Uh, there's also some inconsistencies with like stating that base Goku uh, isn't strong enough to beat Frieza, and Super Saiyan Goku would be only barely stronger than him, which we know that isn't true since Super Saiyan Goku was able to handle, you know, perfect cell, even though he's using half his power, is way more powerful than, um, you know, Frieza in Super Saiyan form. So he's way above that. That's just BS. And at this point, he should be even stronger. And in base, he should be able to one-shot him. And then the, uh, the other BS with, you know, Beer saying that he used 10% of his power, you could probably chalk it up to him lying or just bad writing. I would say more bad writing. Uh, it doesn't make sense that he was able to use 10% of his power or draw 10% of Beer's power, seeing as how even as strong as they get later on, they're not, Beerus is way stronger than them, which would mean that they didn't get 10 times stronger, which doesn't make any sense, obviously. But the most important feats are the universe destroying feats, the ones that are contested by a lot of fans. We saw quite a bit of statements already. We saw by the, we saw by Whis, we saw by Elder Kai, we saw by Supreme Kai, we saw by the narrator himself, we saw even by Beerus and shit. So we saw constantly them stating that. So the two big arguments constantly with this uh, arc was, when it came to the feats and the power scaling was, uh, one, is, is this fight between Super Saiyan God Goku and Beerus, a universe destroying, uh, uh, you know, fight and a universe destroying feats. And two, does Goku actually absorb the power of Super Saiyan God in his Super Saiyan form and then later on in his base form? Because a lot of people contest that. Now, both of them, this arc, going through it, the feats step by step, it should disprove those kind of arguments that those are incorrect. Yes, he did absorb it into his Super Saiyan form. The narrator even stated that, uh, you know, he uh, Beer stated that 
he made it his own power. That's the the blaze of the you know Super Saiyan God is still within him in Super Saiyan form. He even said that when Super Saiyan Goku was attacking him, that this is the power of Super Saiyan God. And the fight would have been over already if it didn't uh, have that power. He would have just been like, you're not just done. So it makes no sense for him not to have absorbed it. And the reason why I think base he absorbed it in his base later on is because they had an energy attack that combined with their attacks, which before was a universe-destroying attack. And Goku was able to destroy it with one punch in his base. So obviously he's really powerful. Um, and then the universe-destroying stuff, yes. It took three shots. People say, well, Beerus did most of the work. Yes, for the first two, but then the third one, Goku was able to cancel it out. And later on, it was just a brawl. So they both were able to control it. So clearly that is incorrect at that point. It was not just solely a Beerus. Goku could also do it since he matched the angling power. Uh, and then if you want to say, well, they're not universe level and stuff. It's just the shockwaves or this and that. The narrator and everybody said that they had power capable of destroying the universe. Uh, the Supreme guy said, why is the shockwaves not happening? He said that you know, they were able to control it uh, and they basically just made it into a brawl, which is also important because later on people keep on making the argument that, well, Goku and, you know, fights against a bunch of other characters that should be stronger than Goku was then, but their universe is not being threatened. Control, they literally said right there, so don't make that argument. You sound stupid when you say that shit. And then if it, is it universal level of power? Yes. Because remember, three punches were able to do this all the way back then and Goku acknowledged that he got stronger he said uh, it, it was stated that the last five minutes prior uh goku got even stronger than he was then and at that point he already matched the power so he was able to match the sh uh, energy shock waves that beerus was generating so he was equal on that level and then he was able to surpass that um as he was fighting and then even further than just super saiyan god because now he has in his base so even if you want to argue that you know super is, he has that power in his base alone or Super Saiyan or base alone. So it's like, it doesn't matter. You can just stack up the other Super Saiyan forms with that, which will put them way past, uh, you know, universal levels of power. So at this point, at the end of it, it went from Super Saiyan God Goku and Beerus, three clashes can destroy the universe to they pretty much can uh, one-shot the universe uh, with each of their any of their attacks, their physical or their energy attacks, to, oh, no, now he can do it in Super Saiyan form, then to, oh, he can do it in his base form. So base Goku at this point is equivalent to Super Saiyan God, which has been stated multiple times by multiple legit sources and had been shown and threatened to be able to destroy the universe. And if any dumbass says, well, why didn't they destroy the universe? They didn't destroy the universe. So it's like, obviously, that's the whole point. He was trying to prevent it. If he destroyed the universe... There would be no point. There would be no... Goku would have lost. He would have He would have destroyed everything and failed. That was the whole reason he was doing that. And they even mentioned it multiple times. And even the narrator, who is pretty much a legit source, which is just Toriyama's writing or Toyotaro's writing or whoever's writing, stating that that's, you know, that's the case and that's what they're trying to go with. That's why they kept on focusing on it multiple times. Uh, so when we go off of, based off of just this first arc of scaling alone towards the tail end, from... Uh, a low ball, let's say low ball, base Goku, Super Saiyan Goku and a low ball would be able to destroy universe. Then you t stack that up with Super Saiyan 2, 3, and then Super Saiyan God, which would make him low multiversal level or multiver uh, uh, or multiversal level. Because you have to destroy a thousand, destroy or create over a, well, a thousand universes. It says like a thousand and one universes at the very least. So we will say, might say, well, that isn't that, that uh, level of power. But remember, when you do the multipliers of the Super Saiyan, it does uh, up it. But if you want to say no, okay, it's still low multiversal. So Super Saiyan Goku would be uh, universal plus to uh, maybe low multiversal and then... Um, 100% Super Saiyan, uh, Super Saiyan God Goku at that point would be high, low, multiversal. And then if you want to highball it even further, base Goku would be uh, low, multiversal to uh, universal plus. Or in uh, 100%, he would be at low, multiversal, high, 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 low, multiversal, near to pretty much multiversal levels of power. And this is before he even gets stronger throughout the series. So yeah, it's very impressive. Also, it's even more impressive when you see the feats because people keep on saying it's just universe, a universe, a universe. Yes, they stated a universe, but the Dragon Ball universe is a little bit different than our universe. There is the living universe that is comparable to our size of our universe. Our, the size of our universe is a little bit contested on how big it is, 
people keep on saying 96 billion light years, but that's just the observable uh, universe. That's just how much we can see with our instruments. We know the real universe, the actual size of it, the unobservable universe is actually a lot bigger. Some scientists estimate it to be 250 times bigger, so around 23.5 trillion light years uh, across, which is far bigger than 96 uh, you know, light years. Uh, and 96 billion light years. A lot of people, though, I've seen also math calculations saying that it would make it 6 trillion light years. And it's like, that's not true. That's not how math, that's not correct. If you do 96 times 250, uh, 96 billion times 250, it gets to 23.5 trillion. I don't know where they got a six. So some people's math is wrong, but that's how big our universe is. So going based off of all the logic, they were not just destroying a single universe. They were destroying the Dragon Ball macrocosm, which has multiple realms. So let's go through all that. And I've explained it multiple times before, but let's do it again for this video because we're trying to get the best scaling and pure scaling for how powerful they are. So the living universe is comparable to the size of our universe. The observable universe is 96 billion uh, light years, but it's estimated actually to be 250 times bigger. So 23.5 trillion light years uh, across. So the Dragon Ball universe is 23.5 trillion light years across. Then you uh, add heaven, which is stated to be the size of the living universe itself. So you have two universal realms. Then they have a sun around uh, uh, heaven, which is almost the size of heaven. So it's a little bit smaller, but it's still universe size. So it's a bit smaller than the universe, which I'll just for argument of sake, let's just say it's another universe. So three universes there. Then there's the Grand Kai planet, which is a little bit smaller than the sun, which is even, uh, which would still make it around universe size, but a little bit smaller. So four universes. Then we have the demon realm, which is stated to be a mirror realm of uh, the living world. So that's another universe, five universes. And then we have, uh, I think, uh, um, I think that uh, then we have hell, which is, the mirror world it's not the the demon realm and hell are in the same place they're two different dimensions so hell is the mirror opposite of heaven the demon realm is the mirror opposite of earth uh, of the living universe so it's the same as the living universe but just like with de uh, demons and hell is the inverse of heaven so it's the same size as heaven so that's the six uh universe size dimensions and then our uh, other world basically houses the King Kai's planets, the King Kai planets, uh, Snake Ways, uh, and basically Heaven, uh, Grand Kai's planet, and the star there, which are three uh, universe-sized uh, dimensions. We don't know how big uh, the afterlife is. Some people say it's a higher dimension, like five, 5D or 4D or whatever. I'm not going to argue that because then, you know, it might highball it too much, but even lowballing, it should be bigger than multiple universes because it can house three universe-sized dimensions within it. So it is pretty big, just unquantified. So we have a seventh dimension, which is just the afterlife itself, which is far bigger than a universe. Just we don't know how much. Then we have the Supreme Kai's realm, which is the eighth uh, dimension, which is one-tenth the size of the macrocosm. So we don't know how big it is. We know it's somewhat of a calculation but those other realms were already multiple universes on top so it would either be big as our universe or bigger depending on how much these realms are uh you know together so it would still be pretty big so we have what the living universe one universe heaven two universes the sun three universes uh grand Kai's planet four universes the demon realm five universes hell six universes uh and then we have Two, that's really hard to quantify. Afterlife is bigger than the universe, so that's way bigger than that, so that's like seven. And then the eighth one is pretty much uh, one-tenth the size of the macrocosm, depending on how big it is as a whole. And the Grand Kai and the Sun, they're a bit smaller than the universe, uh, because they're a bit smaller than heaven, which is stated to be the size of the universe. So that's also a little bit wonky. So those will downscale it a little bit, but then the afterlife will upscale it a lot more. And depending on the afterlife, put those mixed in and that, 
uh, and those combined, they basically scale off uh, the Supreme Kai's planet scales one tenth off of that, which is a lot of confusion, but just know it's well above universe level. So this feat alone, just destroying the Dragon Ball universe would not put it at a universal level of feat. It would actually put a universal plus or a low multiversal level feat. So people keep on saying, well, oh, you know, he only destroyed a universe there, so he's only universal. No, 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 these are multiple universe uh, sized dimensions. So there's distance between uh, these dimensions and these realms already so it's already further so you would also have to include the distance between uh where the you know supreme kai's realm orbits around the universe 7 uh, macrocosm as a whole which is still crazy those are just gonna require then at that point pretty much uh you know head cannon so I'll just uh and you know unquantifiable like uh, mathematics and equations so i'm just gonna say like around five or six uh times the size of the universe that's still impressive so that means that even if you want to say well there you were destroying three punches i don't believe that they can destroy one that would still mean that one punch would be universal why because it would be six universes right so each punch three of them would be divided that so that would be like around two so that means each punch would have a power to destroy two universes as they will total up to six. Three times two is six. So that means one punch would be able to destroy two universes. So it's still, they would be beyond universal levels. They would be universal plus um, with a single punch. So it really depends on where you want to put this. I know it gets a little confusing with a lot of the moving around. So it really depends. Um, like I said, it should be far bigger than six universes, but just being, you know, uh, conservative with the the estimations because we can't really defin definitively say to what extent uh, and try to lowball it. It will be six, uh, destroying the Dragon Ball Macrocosm will be like destroying six universes, six universes. So each punch, even if it was just one punch, would mean that one punch is capable of destroying two universes compared to destroying, you know, the Dragon Ball universe. And for my, for me personally, I believe that they could one shot the entire Dragon Ball Macrocosm, meaning that they could one shot six universes combined, which is still impressive. So this feat is not a universal level feat. It's universal in the sense of Dragon Ball, but the way the cosmology is structured is beyond our universe. So technically, being universal in Dragon Ball would be pretty much in our world at a low ball being able to destroy six universes five or six universes which is insane that's insane that's crazy to think that considered to be a universal level being there would make you a universal plus it just in general uh but yeah pretty much um and this was goku goku's base once again so even if you want to say well he didn't you know three times it's you know it was only gonna destroy that but that was in his base and you're forgetting the fact that he can multiply what super or the super saiyan forms so super saiyan one alone would already put him past its universal level one shotting universe so that argument really wouldn't matter anyway it's just pointless because the multipliers go up crazy so if i was to multiply properly let's say um with my scaling base goku i do think could destroy the entire entire dragon ball macrocosm with one shot so it's six times univer uh, universal right so let's do some math uh let's go through all, all the super saiyan forms and for a super saiyan god i'm gonna i i'm gonna just lowball the form and just say it's a two times multiplier so base goku can one shot a, uh the entire dragon ball macrocosm which is six times universal times that by super saiyan one which is 50 we mean 300 times universal so Base Goku, Super Saiyan 1 Goku and Battle of Gods would be 300 times uni uh, universal. So he would be high, low to kind of mid uh, multiversal, uh, low, low multiversal, not multiversal. Because multiversal is over a thousand. But then you times this by Super Saiyan 2, then you get 600. So we're getting a little bit more up there. Then you times that by 4, Super Saiyan 3, which uh, 4 is times Super Saiyan 3, which would be 2,400. So, base Goku one, can one-shot 6 universes. Super Saiyan 1 Goku can one-shot 300 universes. Super Saiyan 2 Go, uh, Goku can one-shot 600 universes. And Super Saiyan 3 Goku alone can one-shot 2,400 universes. Meaning that Super Saiyan 3 Goku would be past... 
multiversal. He would not be low multiversal anymore. He would be past multiversal, pretty much making him uh, multiver uh, multiversal plus, or yeah, multiversal plus because it's 2,400 times multiversal. And then times this by Super Saiyan God, which this is a low ball, just saying two times, which would be 4,800 universes, which would be well above uh, you know, multiversal and scaling. So 4,800 universes by Super Saiyan God if he's to stack the Super Saiyan forms on top of his base, which was equivalent to Super Saiyan God at that end. Um, and if you want to, let's, let's say, go by the more conservative standard saying, well, it was only half, there will be still two universes, right? Because like I said, three punches uh, dividing the six would be two. So one, you can one shot two universes. So he'll still be universal plus times that by 50, you get 100, times that by two, you get 200, uh, times that by four, you get uh, 800, and then times that by, um, you know, another two, you get 1600. So even if we want to be lowballing to the highest, because I still think that's a low ball to say three times, uh, he needs three punches to destroy the entire macrocosm, which would be six universes. Still at Super Saiyan God, he would be beyond, uh, you know, um, He'll be beyond uh, multiversal. He wouldn't even be low multiversal. He'll be able to destroy 1,600 universes. So at a high ball, he could destroy 4,800 universes. So more than four times multiversal. And as a low ball, he would be able to destroy just barely over, uh, you know, multiversal. So he would be able to destroy 1,600 universes, which is pretty damn impressive if you ask me. So yeah, that's pretty crazy. Now, I've been rambling for quite a bit towards the end. Sorry if I've been gone, uh, going on for a little bit too much. I just wanted to explain that quite a bit. If you guys want to go back and check any of the other stuff that I said, uh, just know that all these feats I took directly from the show, all these statements, nothing is taken out of context. Everything was as it was shown. If you guys don't agree, watch the arc all over again. It explains it. I think it's pretty vividly and 100% telling us that Goku has absorbed Super Saiyan God in his, uh, his Super Saiyan form at that point and then a base form at the end. And that Goku could one shot or at least destroy the entire Dragon Ball macrocosm with his power alone. And he has universe destroying power even uh, in his Super Saiyan forms. So yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed and uh, stay tuned for next time.